find a paper that you want to use as a background. This paper came out of the Stargazer paper pack from Hobby Lobby, but Michael's, Joanne's, and Hobby Lobby all sell single sheets of paper and cardstock, I believe. I drew a TARDIS in Photoshop, made it a few different sizes, and printed it out on white cardstock, but you can draw your TARDIS with a computer program or by hand, whatever is easiest for you. You'll also need some other pieces of cardstock, and I have the measurements for each one of them, um, both below and on my blog. You'll need a piece of blue cardstock, two pieces of white cardstock, two pieces of black cardstock, and a piece of decorative paper or cardstock. You'll need something to burnish or crease a fold with, like an ink pen. Um, you'll need some colored pencils, any brand will do, or markers, whatever you want to color with. You'll need scissors, glue, double-sided tape, something, any kind of adhesive that you want to work with, a marker, a pencil, an eraser, a ruler, and a white or silver gel pen. I'll post a link, a complete list of the measurements and supplies on my blog, which you'll find linked below. Here I'm deciding which TARDIS size that I want to use, and I picked one that was about one and a half inches wide and three inches tall. Next I'm picking the area that I like best in my paper and cutting it to that size. I used a Cricut paper trimmer, but you can measure and cut using the ruler and regular scissors. To get my card base, I'm taking my blue cardstock and I'm lining up the edges and folding it in half. Once I get the edges lined up, I use my ruler to press the curved side into a crease. And then I use a pen and cap to burnish the crease so that I have a nice crisp edge and so my card base will stay closed. I normally use Prismacolor pencils to color with, but for this card I used some generic color pencils that my grandkids had. I played around with the blues until I found two that I thought would work, and I picked a yellow for the windows and the light on the top. These pencils were not quite as dark as I would have liked, but they did work. I did use Gamsol to blend the colors a bit, um, but you don't have to use anything like that if you don't want to. I then cut my TARDIS out and I cut it right on the line. When I was finished cutting it out, I used a black marker or a Sharpie. It will work as well to run along the edge, which gives the cutout some definition. Next, I took the smallest piece of my white cardstock and penciled in two lines so I could write my sentiment. Because I'm a River Song fan and because I felt like it was totally the perfect phrase, I wanted my sentiment to be, hello, sweetie. I first wrote the sentiment in pencil and then I went over it with my black marker. And after I was finished, I erased all of the pencil marks and I'm sorry my hand is in the way because it makes it kind of hard to see what I'm doing and I will try to work on that for my next video. Now that all the prep work is done, we can do my favorite part of card making, which is putting it all together. I first glued the larger black piece of my cardstock to my card base, and it might look like I'm using a lot of glue here, but I'm really not. My glue has a small applicator tip on it, and it's just a really fine line of glue. You do need to be careful if you're using liquid glue, because too much can make your cardstock or paper buckle or wrinkle. Next I glue on my decorative paper, it's the one that looks like the outer space. And after that, I glue my sentiment onto the small black paper piece. Now I'm just playing with the positioning of my two pieces. There's no adhesive on them at this point. I'm just laying them out in a couple of different configurations to find the one that I like the best.
once I decided on my orientation and the layout of my card, I glue the cinnamon piece directly to the card front. For the TARDIS, I added some Scotch 3D mounting tape, but it's not necessary. If you don't have any, you can just glue the TARDIS directly to the card front. But if you do have mounting tape or some craft foam, you can cut to the size and you can add it to the back of the TARDIS and it will give your card some dimension and interest. After I finished the front of my card, I took a white jelly roller and made some stars because I thought the background needed just a little something. You could add swirls or dots or anything else you like to make the background have a little bit more interest. I do have a pack of star shaped sequins and if you look really close you can say, see them laying just above my ruler. But I wanted to make this card without using anything but what a non-crafter might have on hand or could get with minimum effort and cost, so I ended up not using them. And after I finish the front of my card, I glue my last white piece of cardstock on the inside. If you use white cardstock, white cardstock or another light color as your base, you don't have to do this. But I'm doing it so that anything that I write or stamp on the inside can be seen clearly. Here's my completed card with a handwritten sentiment on the inside. I have made several of these cards. I usually make them with hand blended backgrounds and use stamps, um, but I wanted to keep this one very simple as I said earlier. Um, I, do, I am showing you a few of the other cards that I have and if you'd like to see a, how to make a bit more complex of a TARDIS card, please check out my other video which I will link. And this is my very first video, so thank you for hanging out with me and bear with me for all the mistakes. I've learned a lot doing this one and I imagine I will learn so much more. But um, all the supplies and measurements are on my blog, so please check that out. And if you like this card, please subscribe to my channel and I'll get another card video posted next week. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.